What does a $300 million Air Force AWACS plane and my dad's 21-year-old car have in common? Find out on this week's episode, we'll be making some ozone. Stay tuned. Hi Minions, welcome back to another episode of Auto Misery. Um, the show is about cars, places, and things, and so far it's been about cars, cars, and cars. And today it's going to be the first episode about a thing, but it's going to make an improvement on a car. So stay with me, because this machine that we're going to review, hopefully, will do wonders. In this box is called an Enerzen, E N E. R Z E N advanced portable air purification system and what this is is an ozone um, depletion or actually no ozone creator and so this is supposedly going to get the smoke smell out of my dad's car whenever I saw an unboxing about five years ago on YouTube I used to laugh because I'm like who cares about the boxing of something if I want to see a product, I want to see the review of it. it. Does it work? Does it not work? But I don't really care what it looks like to, to see the packaging or unpackaging of it. And so this is how we do things in, uh, in, in the auto misery world. Unboxing complete. Let's get on. All right, so let's march out to the barn where we keep the, uh, my dad's car. And we can talk about a couple of other issues out here, unrelated to anything else, of course, because that's the way I am. It's the way we roll. It is cold. When I woke up this morning, it was 11 degrees, colder than a witch's tit. These things must be done delicately. And tomorrow's supposed to be maybe up to 50 degrees, so why can't I just put this off until tomorrow? Because the ozone maker i'm doing i'm going to put overnight so i need an overnight to do this there's the porsche 928 porsche 928 lana sitting there um normally i would open this garage door but the other day we had a melt and then it refroze and it froze that door stuck so when i did the keypad here and pulled that door up the automatic door opener ripped the screws right out of this thing. Let's see if we can get some lights in here. So up there are the, is the bracket and it's hanging down right there. So those just ripped right out of the door because the door was frozen shut. So I need to fix that. Um, you know, you might hear whimpering in that in the background. I have a big girl of a dog here, and you guys probably have never even met her. This is Ava. And Miss Ava, say hi. And she lives out here in the barn, and she's got a heat pad inside a dog glue, inside a barn, through a pet door, so she's pretty good and relaxed. Um, some other issues. There's another little dog running around here, and that's uh, Ori the Wonder Dog. And so... Ori, when he was a puppy, he's only two now, but last year he chewed everything. This is my Sawzall, and this is what he did to it. This is ridiculous. And he's ruined several extension cords inside the house. In addition to that, I had a heater in this dog glue for Ava. A heater mounted inside and drilled a hole in the back and ran a wire out, and the dog, the little dog, Ori, chewed on the wire, this is before it was plugged in, this is during summertime, and chewed it all the way through. So now there's a, a heat pad, and the, the cable now is coiled in a metal spring, so Ori doesn't tear it up. Anyway, this is, it's really dirty, this car is. I take it, like I said, every, every Sunday to church, so it doesn't get washed. It's in the wintertime here in Missouri, and um, the car smells like smoke, and we're going to take care of that. I've, like I said, heard of a couple of ways of doing that. One of the uh, one of the interesting ways is to put a pan of vinegar inside the car and let 
the smell of vinegar penetrate everything and stink it up. And then for another night, roll the windows down and all the smells that the vinegar absorbed will stink like vinegar. But the next night when you do it again, you take the vinegar out and air it out for a whole night and then the vinegar smell goes away. I'm not sure that's worked. I think I tried that on, on my truck out there and it didn't work so much. So I'm gonna go with the ozone uh, creator and a couple of other issues too you know i said most things work on this car the power locks power windows and things but they work a little slow so uh when you push a button they work but they move gingerly and i think that may be smoke inside of the door panels and fouling up or or dirtying up the contacts for some of these switches but uh we we shall see So many of you may or may not know that I am a retired Air Force uh, officer and I used to fly AWACS. So I have hundreds of hours of AWACS. It's a plane with a big radar on it. This is a model of that. And the reason why I'm showing you this is when the United States Air Force wanted to make this radar plane, they were looking for 707 airframes, which is America's first jet airliner. This is in the late 70s, early 80s. Jet airliners had already been around for a couple of decades. And they were wanting to find these planes and they couldn't because everyone had gone to 727s and different aircraft. So they went to third world nations, they went to South America, they went to Africa, they found some old 707s still flying in airlines around the world. They purchased them and brought them back to the United States to refurbish them and to put a radome on top and to make them military jets. We're still flying these jets today. And the reason I bring this up is when uh, I first was trained to fly in this jet, it's got uh, it's a surveillance airplane. You can tell other aircraft, fighter aircraft, and tankers where to go. Um, and on board, next to the radar scope, I noticed an ashtray. <laughs> and I was laughing because you can't smoke on military installations and, and in uh, government buildings and things like that. But times have changed. And I guess the Air Force crews in the old days, when flying aboard AWACS, were actually smoking while flying. And then previous to that, when this was just a 707 airliner, um, you know, you were allowed to smoke on board. Um, and they would tell you to please extinguish all cigarettes before landing and things like that. So when they refurbished this aircraft and took all the wiring out of the, the walls and, and everything, there was a thick, gooey substance everywhere. And it was like honey. And they determined that to be all the tar and nicotine that was floating around from all the years of smoke. And I bring that up because I think that is the same issue with my dad's car, um, having smoke issues in the door and the contacts not being um, real clean and, and that's why everything's working slowly. And so uh, not only am I gonna have to use an ozone um, cleaner to get the smell out, I'm probably gonna have to open up the door panels and, and clean some contacts too. But that's why I bring out the model of the, uh, the AWACS. All right, so I got this ozone maker in here and typical guy fashion, I'm not gonna read the instructions cause I don't wanna turn in my man card. And I was gonna put this in overnight. I don't know if that's a good or bad idea, but I noticed on here, it says it's got timer all the way up to 180 minutes and then there's one that goes to hold and hold i guess would do all night but maybe i should put on 180 minutes come back and check it out and then read the instructions um, i don't know if you're supposed to close the car up completely i don't know if it makes any kind of um, off gassing or anything comes off of this thing but i got to open through the window here so i'm gonna have the window cracked it's got the plug-in coming in and we'll see how this bad boy works here. It said definitely don't stay in here. There's no power to it. Why is that? Why is that? Oh, there's power there. Okay, so even though there's no light on there, I should read the instructions, but uh, 
I can hear it. Something's happening in there. So something's going on. Something's creeping and crawling in there. So it is working. It says uh, on the outside of the box, because I didn't read the instructions, of course, but it said don't stay in this closed car or closed space with this machine on. I'm sure it's sucking out all the, the molecules that you probably need to live. So we'll come back out here and check on this later. All right, this is the next day, and this is Ori the Wonder Dog. Ori, sit. Sit. Ori, shit. Up. Shake. Shake. Good boy. High five. Good boy. Dance. Dance. Good boy. Down. Roll over. Good boy. He's wonderful. All right, let's go take Ori out to see uh, the cougar and see how the ozone maker was working. Come on, Ori. Come on, Ava. Come on, come on Ava, there you go. All right, so I did uh, read the instructions for this ozone machine and I was doing it wrong. First of all, the red light wasn't on because the power wasn't on. The noise I was hearing was actually the little timing, um, the timer that I had set. So that was ticking and I was, thought it was working. So before I went to bed last night, I checked all the connections and one of them wasn't connected. And so when I plugged it in, a red light came on and a big old puff of whatever comes out of this machine and it smells pretty bad so I it also told me to seal up the window instead of leaving a crack so I did that and it said before you go in the vehicle air it out after it stops after the machine stops for a whole hour all right hey guys can you look away while I put in the code thank you I appreciate that All right, so I have no idea if this thing's gonna work or not. Since this is busted, I didn't even have to push a code anyway. I could have just, <laughs> just lifted the door. Actually, I can smell, I can smell that stuff. All right, let's see. Hmm. Well, the machine is off, light goes off, I guess, after the timer. And that's pretty cool. It's, there is no smoke smell. It's kind of like this ozo machine smell, and I bet it'll dissipate too. But I think, I think this thing works. I don't think I can smell the smoke anymore. Now, I still need some good cleaning, and, and probably there's, you know, we already talked about uh, the smoke inside the doors, and I'm sure there's probably inside the windows and, and in the upholstery as well. But I think this thing works. It smells like a champ. So there you go. Um, got a fight going on back over here. You guys, what are you doing? All right. But anyway, that's a, that's a go. So uh, you guys, uh, if you need to get smoke out of your car, these Ozo machines do work. It smells great. And so all right, let's see uh let's see if this smells any better. Oh, I forgot about the gear shift. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go backwards or not until it warms up. I'm gonna have to put you on pause until it warms up. All right, I know that was a, a quick edit for you, but that was about four minutes for me trying to get this car warmed up and it finally went. So it takes a little while to get this car warmed up before it'll go in reverse. And you know, that smell is kind of like a medicinal smell. Like you just, you're going into surgery and the operating room has got a, it's got a, a clean, sterile smell. That's what this machine uh, and has made this car smell like. Let's see. Maybe I should roll down the windows and air this bad boy out. See how slow the windows are going? Or you, I don't know if you can. Well, this one's stuck. Look at that. That's well, that's new. Well, obviously the motor works, but it's sticking, and I think that's because of the smoke. That's just my belief. But until I get in there to look at it, I won't know. Better put it up before it sticks in the lower position. The other window works too, but it works slow as well. No, 
it's we're gonna go down so far. Oh, let's keep let's air this out. But what I don't smell anymore is that smoke smell. So this machine works, and I will leave a link in the bottom in the description so you can find out where I got this thing from. I'm usually pretty frugal, so it's usually never the top of the line of anything when I buy something. Um, and no, this wasn't given to me for a product placement because I'm such a small YouTube channel. I only have like 80 subscribers. Not a lot of folks gonna gonna look at my gonna look at my channel for a lot of sales revenue. So only the big folks are gonna get that. So it would be nice if you guys would subscribe so you can support me. I need to have over a thousand subscribers and I only have 80. So if you like the, the material and you want to support the content for small YouTubers like myself, especially myself, please uh, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribing, I think, is more important than likes. But uh, no, this thing works right, real good. And I'm, I, think it's, I think we have a winner. All right. Hey, guys, it's another episode of Auto Missouri. Thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe and support uh, uh, small YouTubers, especially me. All right. Remember, misery loves company. Take care. We'll see you next time.